yada, yada, yada. There's nothing that people love more than magic stuff. Oh, man. That was a hard one. That was definitely a hard one. I just don't have time for this. Wait a second. Time. The time trick. Time. This is a time trick. This is a time trick. This is a time trick. So there's nothing that people love more than time tricks. This is a time trick. This is a trick that involves time. Uh, so you have the spectator uh, think of their favorite hour of the day from 1 through 12. So they could think of 1, they could think of 2 o'clock, they could think of 3 o'clock, they could think of 4 o'clock, or a rock. <laughs> <sighs> Anyways, uh, the spectator then grabs the deck after you give it uh, one of these cuts. Yeah, you see what I, you see what I did there? You see one of these cuts, right? Or maybe one of these, uh, one of these shuffles. If you, if you catch my drift, they, after that, they, um, they're told to, uh, deal down to whatever time they're thinking of one card for each hour. So if they're thinking of five, of course you're turned away and they go one, two, three, four, five. And they remember, haha, the five of spades, which is going to be easy because it's a, um, so after this, you tell the spectator to put the deck on top and to cut the cards so that there's no way that you know when you turn around what particular time and or card they could be thinking of. So you tell the spectator, oh boy, look at how mixed these cards are. These cards are super mixed, sir. There's no way for me to be able to determine anything. But I'll tell you what, I want you to think of the time in your head right now. Think of the particular time that you have in mind that is your favorite time. Go ahead, send that thought to me, sir. Send that thought. Oh man, one o'clock, two o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, four o'clock, it's five o'clock. And of course they're gonna respond and say, yes, yeah, sir, that's the exact time that I was thinking of. Well, you know what? You're thinking of a card too. Uh, send that card to me now. It's the, it's the five of spades. And of course, at that point, not only were you able to tell them their favorite hour of the day, but also the card that corresponds to the hour of, of the day. Um, I mean, come on, come on. Hey, come on, come on. Does that deserve the views and the clicks and the likes and the, uh, the, the shills? Yeah, yes, it does. Yes, yes, it does. So here's the setup for the trick. You need a little bit of a, a little bit of a setup here. Uh, not much though. So you get, um, you get an ace followed by another ace. You, you see the ha ha, and then you get one ace and you put it on top and you take the other ace and you put it on the bottom of the deck. That goes inside of a very expensive black tiger box and you are ready to um, forcibly show somebody a trick when they don't want to see it. So here you tell them, hey, sir, and this is a, a clever pattern point here yeah, you could use. You say, hey, sir, uh, do you know what your lucky card is? No, you don't know what your lucky card is. You don't even know how to find your lucky card. Wow, well, we're going to find your lucky card, sir, uh, using this deck of cards. And of course, you, you do whatever false cut you deem appropriate for the situation. Usually people like to do this, this false cut. Uh, they think that's appropriate for the situation. Some people do this false cut because they think it's appropriate for the situation. Some people don't even do false cuts because um, it's not appropriate. So uh, afterwards, you tell the spectator that uh, to think of their favorite hour of the day, not like 145, but like one or two or three. Just think of it for now. And of course, they're thinking of their favorite hour. And you say, in order to find your lucky card, you're going to deal from the top of the deck one card per hour on, on, on a nice little neat pile. And whatever hour happens to correspond to the, the card that you deal to, that will be your lucky card, sir. And the spectator says, wait a second, that's really convoluted. And you say, fuck you, this is a time trick, you cunt. You need to pay attention. Look, you're gonna deal one card for each hour of the day. The, the card that corresponds to your favorite hour 
is going to be your lucky card, sir. And they go, oh, okay, that makes sense. You know, you got to clarify for these spectators sometimes because sometimes they're thinking of other stuff. They're bored. They're not really interested in your magic. And you got to get them to be interested in your magic. You got to, you got to, um, I can't say that because, uh, okay. So the spectators told to deal one card for each hour. So let's say they, they, their favorite time is six o'clock. So they deal six cards out. Of course, you're looking the other way. That's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, if you clever cat haven't realized what happens, you see that the ace is now here on the bottom of the deck. You, you see what that does? That's, that's one part of this. So this is uh, one key card and there's going to be another key card. So you have two key cards that are going to be the, the helpers in this trick. So they look at the, the card that corresponds to their uh, favorite hour, which in this case, it's the king of diamonds. You go, that's a great card, sir. I'm going to leave this face up just for posterity's sake here. So the spectator is then told to put the deck on top of their card and then to give the deck one complete cut as to there being no way that when you turn around, there's any indication of anything whatsoever from a shuffled deck. And then you turn around and you say, remember, you shuffled the deck, a blatant lie. Uh, and then afterwards, uh, you, you could have thought of any hour. So here, what you're going to do is you're going to spread the cards out either on the table or to yourself. You could, you could do this in, in your hands and say, man, you, this deck is really mixed. There's nothing I could do here. But all you're looking for is your red aces. So you're going through and you're looking for your red aces right here. So starting with the first red ace you see, you're going to count that as one. So that's one. Then you're going to count the other one as two, three, four, five, all up until you get to the last ace. So you're not going to count the last ace. You're going to count the card before the last ace. And that's going to be the six card. So that tells you, hey, guess what? Because there are six cards, including this ace, that tells you that they're thinking of six o'clock. And of course, if you've noticed, this card is face down, which is not going to be in performance unless you are retarded. This card is going to be the actual card that the spectator has cut to, which is their lucky card or whatever pattern point you want to have. So here's the, you, you notice, counting one, two, three, four, five, six, the six card is going to be their card. So now when you're done spreading, you say, oh man, I have no idea of anything. Of course, you're lying blatantly, but... But you see your clever cat, because of this lovely uh, two key card principle here, what's happening is that not only are you able to tell them and able to determine the hour of the day that they're thinking of, you're also able to determine the, the, the card that they're thinking of here. So when you close the deck up, you better remember six and you better remember king of diamonds because then if you don't, the trick's going to be ruined. So uh, once again, remember, one, count the ace. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Remember that card, continue spreading and go, oh man, there's no way I can know anything here. Now you're going to have to work really hard here, sir. And then whatever pattern point you want, if you want them to grab your hand and finally have that sweet, sweet human contact, it's up to you. But you're able to tell them the time that they're thinking of and the card that they're thinking of. So you, um, that's not even a hard trick to do. And to get into it from a shuffle deck, here's a little bit of a bonus. Uh, you, you can have the spectator shuffle the deck as much as they want. All you're going to look for is either you could memorize the top card and the bottom card, but I find it easier to try to find a pair of cards. So when you're going through the deck and going, oh boy, this is a really shuffled deck of cards. Statistically, you're going to have two cards that are pairs here together. So in this case, we have two queens. What I would do is that I would just cut. You, you see what I'm doing here? I'm cutting between the queens here, and then that's gonna be my two key cards. So again, you're more than welcome to look for two cards that match. In this case, I have uh, a three and a three that are very close to each other. So what I might do in that case is I'll just cut like this. So one three is on the bottom. I know that the other three is third from the top. So I'll just go, oh man, oh, I'm clumsy as hell. Sit. And, and now I have three and three and I'm ready for the, the hot trick after the spectator has shuffled the cards. So that is a hot one. You practice it, you take it to the grave, you do all the things that people do when it comes to videos, uh, to, and you make sure not to take those drugs from the kid in the playground. I'm gonna go figure out different ways to take the drugs from the kid in the playground.
Oh, <laughs> shit.